My brothers and sisters, what is going on? This is still Sermon in the House. Sunday evening with another video. As always, do me a favor. Like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Link in the description below. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the number one guy, in my opinion, who I'm going to be heavily focused on that's not named Kenny Pickett on the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's George Pickens. So, obviously, this is Pickens' second season in the league. There's a lot of big expectations for him, and deservingly so. You know, I mean, everyone's hyping this guy up to be our best wide receiver, one of the best in the game, potentially, even. And there's a lot to like about this guy, as I'm, like I said, putting a big eye on him for this season. And it started all with OTAs last week. With his route improvement, as I've seen so much with that. That much talent and that much that can be done with George Pickens is more than capable of developing this season. I want to see it with the camaraderie, you know. You see it with Deontay Johnson and Allen Robinson, who is undoubtedly going to be the leader of this wide receiver core. Okay? That's just how it is. But, you see, Pickens is kind of similar to Robinson. Whereas Deontay Johnson, you know, you can say what you want about him with the drops and not scoring any touchdowns. But the fact of the matter is, Deontay Johnson just creates a lot of great separation when it comes to matchups right there. And I think that's going to be a big musical chairs as far as Pickens and Robinsons go. You know, who's going to be put, you know, on the number one corner? Who's going to be matched up with this guy? Who's going to be lined up on the outside? Who's going to be lined up in the slot? So those are the big concerns, or the, not concerns, the biggest questions right there, I should say, for George Pickens. And our expectations of this guy... In the long term, I have to stress this when I say the long term. Not right now, but the long term I'm talking about is that this guy is going to eventually be the number one receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you look at the stats, I mean, last year, 52 catches, 108 yards, four touchdowns. A lot of that has to do with the bald-headed stooge up there in the press box named Matt Canada. Do I have to even explain it? You know, I'm giving Pickens the credit to his misuse, you know? And a lot of that has to do with personnel. A lot of that has to do with play calling. And a lot of that has to go with Matt Canada. Because let me tell you something about the stat line that Pickens had last year. Do you know... That out of all the wide receivers in the league, all of them, hundreds of receivers, George Pickens was assigned the most go routes out of any receiver in the league last year, and it was not even close. Not even close. And you want to know why that is? Because Matt Canada up there... He know he literally knows nothing else other than to say, yeah, just run a go route. Yeah, just run in a straight line and just get open and, you know, pick it or Mitch or whoever's at quarterback. He'll bomb it to you and you make an impossible one handed catch like he did in week three against the Cleveland Browns. But we ain't gonna see that this year. And to me, I mean, we, we have a, a million reasons why Matt Canada needs to be fired, you know. Everyone has their own interpretation of it. He's a horrible play caller, you know. He um, doesn't know any other plays except flea flickers and reverse jet sweeps and running up the guts. Oh, Matt Canada, you know, only has Kenny Pickett incorporate the RPOs when he should be taking shots down the field a little bit more often. You get it. We have a million reasons why Matt Canada should be fired. But to me, the one 
reason that warrants a firing right now. I'm talking right now, Sunday, June 4th, 2023. The one reason that Matt Canada should be fired is if the Pittsburgh Steelers have another year this year of Matt Canada not knowing what to do with him. Because let me put it to you like this. If we drafted George Pickens last year for no reason, do you think that the Steelers would not believe in him? It literally makes no sense to draft him if you don't believe in him. We know what this guy is capable of doing. We know that he can even take, you know, handoffs from Kenny Pickett. We know that he can do the slants. We know that he can do wheel routes. We know that he can cause separation. But we are not going to know that for sure until A, Matt Canada is gone, B, we get a new OC up there, and C, Pickens has to prove himself. Now, yes, okay, I'm putting most of this on Matt Canada for why George Pickens had a very underwhelming rookie year. But you got to know at the same time, it's not all on the coaching. It's just the majority of the coaching. We also have to see that George Pickens proves most of our theses and goes out there and becomes this hot commodity that we drafted him for. The Steelers believed in him. You know, Mike Tomlin believes in him. Apparently, Kevin Colbert uh, believed in him. You see, 99.99% of Steeler fans believe in him. And you even see his quarterback believe in him. That's why we took him. And I know, I'm an advocate of, you know, you, you don't fire a coach or you don't fire um, an OC with a rookie quarterback or a rookie receiver. I'm an advocate of that. But here's the thing. Kenny Pickett and George Pickens are no longer receivers. Or uh, rookies, I'm sorry. Kenny Pickett and George Pickens are no longer rookies. They're both entering their sophomore season. And the only way those two are going to regress and have the sophomore slump, which is pretty common, is if Matt Canada doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So, this is a big last chance for Matt Canada. Because we know George Pickens' ceiling. We know what Kenny Pickett's capable of doing. And that's why my focus this year is on George Pickens because out of all this receiver, all, all these targets that Kenny Pickett has, you know, I've beat Deontay Johnson. I've beat that, that horse to death so many times. You know, Allen Robinson, we know he's not what he used to be. He's just a leader on the team. He's going to be a veteran for this, uh, for this um, young receiving core. Then you basically got three tight ends. You got Darnell Washington, who we drafted, basically a six guy on the O-line. Pat Fryermuth continues to do what he does. And then you got, now that I think about it, four tight ends. You got Connor Hayward, who's a hybrid. And then you got Derek Watt, which, yeah, he, may, he mainly plays special teams, but we've seen him line up a tight end a couple of times. Or was it fullback? But the point is, you got at least you know, three tight ends. And, you know, and look at it this way, you know, you want a comparison for George Pickens? Look at Martavis Bryant. Maybe not so much that he can't put the weed down, but that was the comparison that we all got with Martavis Bryant. Oh, this guy's just a go-route runner. Oh, this guy's just a deep threat for Big Ben. But Martavis Bryant, when he wasn't being suspended because he can't put the pot down, he was a, a dependable target. He was a solid number two. And I think that's the biggest comparison that we're looking at right now with George Pickens when it comes to the overall depth and the overall demeanor of that draft pick. So let's get on to it, man. George Pickens, I'm excited to see this guy He's, it's his second year, and I can sense a breakout year for him and Kenny Pickett forming that dynamic duo. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. This is Steel Sermon. Check it on out for the night. May God be with you all.